fancy dress, unicorn hopper. I'm hoping we don't need that one anytime soon. It's another early start and another trailer run, but today is a very big day on the farm project. I am through Bristol before half seven, which is no bad thing. Hopefully it'll be a clear run up now. And once I'm up at the farm, it is, uh, I'm pretty nervous, I won't lie. There's a lot at stake today. There's also a good chance to meet the neighbors. Right here at last, let's unload the trailer. Having twin axle makes it much easier and lighter to tow, but it's much harder to maneuver, especially by hand. Whereas that caravan is just like so light. Although it's not a crazy amount lighter than this, but because that caravan's single axle, you can just kind of spin it on the spot. I do have some sort of system going on, what Joe has. I'm just putting it into action this end. What, I mean, thank you for all your advice on how on earth you should label and photograph and document where your boxes are and what's in them. We come up with a fairly simple way of listing on the end, what's in them, give them a number. And then Joe's just taken a photo on her phone of that number beside what's on it. And then one day when we can be bothered, one evening in front of the TV, we can just put that into a little list and then hopefully it's easy enough to search. So I'm gonna try and stack them in order just so we know what numbers were. Fancy dress, unicorn hopper. I'm hoping we don't need that one anytime soon. Well, it was kind of going to plan, but all the boxes are different sizes. Felt like it was going to be like a nice game of Tetris, but we had a few curveballs in there, but you get the idea. At least we can see the numbers. Right, next thing to do is to work out how big these trailer chassis really are. Uh, there's a good chance we should be able to back the lorry into this yard. But what we need is, I don't know how long the lorry is, let's just uh, say we need double the length of the chassis plus the cab of the lorry to be able to wheel them off because they're, they're ramped off. So that's 100, and, 100 feet plus the cab of a lorry. Let's get measuring. It might just work. Only small hiccup is next door dug up to get some electrics done. And that's only just been filled in so it's a bit soft. One thing you might have seen us struggle with is no power in the caravan for 12 volt power. That is because, well, I thought the transformer would work just off the hookup, but it didn't. So uh, either the transformer's dead or it's gonna benefit from having a battery on it. This is just the old, camper van battery, it's not a leisure battery, but it's better than nothing. Maybe the transformer is working too hard if it's going, stepping it down with no battery to buffer it. I have no idea what I'm talking about. Let's see if this makes a difference. Quite a few caravan owners. Uh, followers, so I don't want to insult anyone. Uh, but there were also a lot of people quite glad that it's one less caravan on the road. Uh, we've got, why is there no power? Oh, we've got power. Oh, that says 12 volt now, switched on caravan. 
Oh, maybe the girls just turn these off. Ah, there we go. Yes, yeah, so basically those two run off 240. Just regular household bulbs. The master switch here. Pretty sure everything. Ah, yeah, yeah. So these are 12 volt. Well, they're around here. This is why we couldn't see the other day. One in there, and hopefully one in the bathroom. So we we solved that. Well done us. I thought I actually turned the transformer off though. That's weird. I know what's happening. They're just running off the residual charge that's in that battery. Doesn't mean the transformer's working. Well, it's buzzing a little bit, but it seems to be okay. I guess we're not actually gonna know how that transformer is performing, because I haven't got a multimeter with me, until the battery, if the battery ran completely flat. Anyway, it's all working for now. I, I'm gonna try and work out where we're gonna put the three birch trees, because they're the ones we really wanna get in soon. Um, fruit trees, tell you what, I'll take you out there now, because the chassis are not coming till two o'clock now. So I'll give you a little explanation on our thinking. Those supermarket fruit trees that we've bought. Uh, funny story there. We put some reserves. You know, we you sometimes see bare root fruit trees outside supermarkets. Well, these ones that we want at the auction are basically the same. And uh, they were more expensive than the ones I saw outside the supermarket. So I bought some more from the supermarket anyway. Then nothing special. We've got 10, maybe eight. We need to get them in. I think what I'm gonna do therefore is put them up around the silage clamps. There's a bit of land up there. But if we head down the bottom, I'll show you where I'm thinking a good orchard would be. We probably don't need to go all the way down and round, but here, where all, all the barns are up top. And then there's a sloping bank here, which is all south facing and it really is just rough ground. It'd be fine for grazing in amongst trees and things like that, but it's not prime ground for anything really. It's just been left to just be wild. So I think we can make this into any sort of wildflower and orchardy bit. And if we do that, then what I want to do is get a better plan for how we lay out the orchard. So I've got, I mean, I've got loads of books, but it'd be good to hear people's recommendations for that. We did when I was a chef at a pub in Somerset. There was an orchard planted there. It's all kind of really nice, kind of classic uh, old English varieties. And it was all really well planned, you know, in rows and looked really smart. So I think that's what we'll do down there for now. These ones, I'm just gonna bring up the hand auger and we'll drop them in and, you know, forget about them because that's all you need to do really with trees. Forget about them, I'd be patient. Well, we've been here for exactly a day and we're already experiencing supplies letting us down. But hey, the chassis that should have turned up yesterday, the driving never showed. So I'm picking up this video about the same time of the day that we finished yesterday. This time I happen to have the girls with me because we've just been doing a school visit. But we're gonna try and get a couple of trees planted while we can. Oh. That is horrible. Don't let the dog know that. Yeah, lovely. Joanne? What's Mike? That's heavy. So maybe snip it here. And then you might be able to unwind it all. All right. Unbelievable. Yeah, they they delayed until yeah. Monday now. So we've got the rest of the day to uh, plant I some trees. Something in my shoe. Got one in. I just had some steaks that were left over. 
the other stakes are a bit <laughs> a bit long and i haven't got a saw here yet so we'll get them in but it's uh, looking relatively is... straight so this is my himalayan birch i really really like it it's really really tall it's taller than daddy how tall is it supposed well, to be it's gonna grow taller than the house well as tall as a house maybe that is big taller than a house i mean that's crazy We want to see this line here. We want to, don't want to go any deeper than that. That's where it came out of the ground. Right, you're going to start kicking. Oh, you can't kick it in. Somebody forgot their wellies. Maggie is having a lovely time digging from moles. Hold it still. They're looking great, girls. So we need to put a strap on this one. Yeah, nice to see who's doing the work. You got something, just a little something on your mouth. Just, just above your nose. Well, it was an unplanned day, but we made the most of it and we got some jobs done. Thanks as always to all of our supporters over on Patreon. We do try our best to share a little bit of bonus stuff over there. So if you want to join them, then head over by using the link down in the description. But that's it. Thanks for watching. Remember, if you can, do it yourself and we'll see you next time.